Hello ladies and gentlemen, Adrian here for DigitalDojos.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to clone objects in photos on OS X with Pixelmator. My My thanks to the folks over at Pixelmator.com for making this video possible. Pixelmator is available for OS X, for iPhone and iPad. And not only is it highly affordable and packs a ton of tools and features in it, it's built for the ground up for OS X and iOS. What I mean by that is it's designed with the core technologies in mind, such as you know iCloud Drive, OpenGL, the 64-bit architecture, the Force Touch trackpads. It really does a great job of unifying that environment in handoff, which allows you to start creating on your iPhone or iPad and then pick up on your Mac where you left off is a really great feature for an app like this. And it's highly worth checking out. For you OS X users, you can get a 30-day free trial. For more information, head over to pixelmator.com. So here we are in Pixelmator, and you'll see here that we have the clone stamp tool selected here. This is what allows you to essentially clone objects in photos, and this can be used in a variety of ways. You can use the clone stamp tool to hide unwanted objects. You can mask unwanted objects within your photos, or obviously, as the name implies, you can use it to clone certain elements of a photo. And we're gonna start off with that here. So when you select the clone stamp tool in the top left here, you'll see that you have these uh, options right here for your clone stamp tool. By default, this use same offset uh, for each stroke is enabled. Now, for this case, I'm gonna show you what that does here and why you wanna disable it if you're just trying to get multiple, if you're just trying to make multiple copies of a certain element. So let's say in this case, I want this water droplet. I wanna repeat it across the image here. Keep in mind at any point too, if you control click, you can adjust the diameter of your tool here and hardness to make it easier uh, to get a larger area or color in a, a essentially smaller or bigger area, depending on your needs here. So the first thing you need to do is define your clone source. You can click on this button up here to do that, or you can alt option click and that will allow you to do the same thing here. Uh, now by defining your clone source, this is the thing essentially that you wanna clone. In this case, the water droplet. Now with use offset right here, the same offset for each stroke, what this will do here is when I click to clone, you'll notice that it's getting the water droplet here essentially, but when I let go and I start to clone again, it's not using that same point I just set. It's it's using a different point here. And this is the way the clone tool works. So when you select that point, in this case, I selected this point right here. When I click to color, you'll notice the plus sign right there. It follows my cursor movement. So if I moved all the way up right here, you'll see that it's cloning everything that the plus sign gets essentially. So anything that that plus sign is going over is what it's gonna clone onto your image. Now, when you let go, obviously, if you're just trying to clone that water drop, it's a pain if I have to keep on going back here and the defining the source and then you know keep on cloning it. It's much simpler if I disable this offset here, define this as my clone source, and then from here, I go about filling in what I want. In this case, I just want this outline of the water droplet here, and then maybe I wanna go down here and put it there as well, and I can go up more to get a bit more of the water droplet so on and so forth. So this is a great way if you're just trying to clone a specific element of a photo here, in this case, just the water droplet and put it on other portions of the photo. So now I have multiple water droplets here on the photo. And of course you can adjust this and use other tools to smooth out and make it look more realistic, essentially with the photo. But that's how you clone objects uh, within a photo and, and you know put it multiple times throughout it. Now I'm gonna show you another example. So here's another example. I have this billboard here, Apple's iPad mini billboard, and I wanna go ahead and remove, let's say just this iPad mini picture right here. I wanna get this out of the billboard and I can easily do that with a clone stamping tool. This makes it much more easier to do things like this because it allows you to get the specific image and then clone it across or the color, or whatever it is, pattern, and clone it across a specific portion. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select this as my clone source, and then from here, I'm just gonna start coloring down. And I'll go around a bit. I can kind of go up here because I still have some space to move around with my plus sign. I can keep on doing that, and then again, let go. I'll define that source again, and then start from here, and kind of move my way down to color over that iPad. Very simple and very easy here. And keep in mind, if it makes it easier, you can always use this magnifying tool to kind of magnify your image and then get more precise of the, as far as coloring in goes. So I can again select the clone stamp tool and then start to color in. 
And there you have a better idea of what it would look like. Obviously, in this case, the billboard is kind of like an off-white and gray sort of color. So you have that kind of, you know, offset as far as the colors go. But you can use it in a case like that to clone over, you know, clone a specific pattern or solid color and then mask over in a part of an image that you don't want. So that's the thing about this clone stamp tool. It's very versatile. It can be used in multiple ways. It can be used to essentially remove or mask over objects that you don't want in a photo or... In the opposite case, you can use it to clone a specific portion of a photo and then put it multiple times throughout, like a, you know, a water droplet, bubbles, clouds, what have you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the clone stamp tool. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, find more information over at pixelmator.com and more technology, business, and lifestyle content over at digitaldojos.com. If you enjoyed this, give it that thumbs up, share it with your friends, comment with your feedback. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.